The year was 2000. Unfortunately, the world didn't end to the Y2K bug. Don't know what that is? These guys literally thought the world was gonna end because of a computer bug. A fucking computer bug! 2000 was a weird year. Eight-year-olds were pissing off their parents by listening to the Marshall Mathers EP behind their back, and the most popular cell phone of the time was literally a brick. But the dawn of the 21st century marked a revolutionary time that changed software development as we know it. And it all started with these nerds. Let's be honest, coding back then wasn't cool, not like it is today. But these guys didn't care coding wasn't cool. To revolutionize the world, you don't follow the crowd. They were visionaries. So you're probably wondering, what did they do exactly? It all started from an email with this man, Bob Martin, otherwise known as Uncle Bob. Now why do people call him Uncle Bob? Who knows? Not only do people call him an uncle, you may also know him by being the author of Clean Code, a book that every software developer has laying around on their desk somewhere. Hell, even I do, mostly just as a trophy item to let other software developers know that I'm the real deal. Anyways, this email from Uncle Bob was the spark that lit the fire. Bob Martin set out to gather lightweight method leaders all in one room. Now, what exactly is the lightweight method? The term is actually coined from an array of articles written in 2000 talking about lightweight ways to build software such as extreme programming, adaptive software development, and Scrum. Terms that you may have heard of before. You see, back then, building software was a very suboptimal process. When people really first started making software in the late 60s, nobody knew the proper process to follow. Then in 1970, a guy named Winston Royce came along and wrote a paper titled Managing the Development of Large Software Systems to Solve This Problem. In the very first page of this paper, he created a diagram that shows the downstream, aka waterfall approach to making software, where requirements are collected up front, product analysis is done, designs are made, then the code is written, finally the software is tested and shipped out in one final bang. Seems pretty standard, right? Well, that's what everyone thought, so companies ran with it. But had they have just read the first sentence after that diagram was shown, they would have known that Royce was basically saying, don't do this. So because reading is hard, software developers had to suffer with this process for over 30 years. So why is this approach bad? You see, software is a very volatile product that can take months or even years to build. This process assumes you have everything planned out before the coding phase even started. And when the coding phase did start and issues would arise or new features were requested, it was very difficult to work them in because this would mean shifting the product deadline. And because corporations didn't want to make trade-offs when developing software, they would impose irrational demands through the imposition positions of corporate power structures. This usually meant that developers had to work overtime to get the job done. And if they didn't, the blame would fall on them rather than poor management or poor planning. And at the very end, after all the code was completed, after the product was tested, it was rarely what the customer wanted simply because the software didn't fit their needs anymore. Now these lightweight methodologies, they sought out to fix these problems. At their core, these early lightweight methodologies put an emphasis on iterative software development. So rather than building software in a systematic, waterfall approach, software would be developed iteratively over multiple cycles. Anyways, Uncle Bob put out this email to end this waterfall approach of making software by gathering all these lightweight leaders in one room and coming up with a set of values that they all could agree on. Originally planned for Chicago, but due to stubborn developers, moved to Snowbird Ski Resort. Now these developers were leaders in the industry. So as you can imagine, the ego was pretty high in this room. But even though the ego was high, in two days they managed to come up with four key values and 12 principles to later follow that they would call the Agile Manifesto. Signed by 17 participants, this was the equivalent of July 4th, 1776 for software developers all across the world. Now the fact that 17 software developers of this caliber all got together in one room and agreed on one thing, that should go in the history books itself. Inside of the manifesto, the four written values consist of individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. The founding fathers made it clear that while the items on the right hold value, the items on the left are valued more. If you're not familiar with these values, let me quickly break them down for you. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Communication is of the utmost value according to the Agile Manifesto. Daily and weekly meetings are necessary for the health of the organization 
in the software that's being developed. Now this value in particular is where the infamous daily standup comes from, a meeting that you see in every day in the life of a software engineer video. Working software over comprehensive documentation. With Agile, you don't need to know everything about what you're making before you start. Documentation is only necessary if it's providing value. And the primary factor of success is working software. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Instead of negotiating a contract with all the product requirements at the beginning of the software development process, customers should be worked with on a daily or weekly basis so dev teams can gather feedback and build something that they're truly happy with. Responding to change over following a plan. Agile is all about responding to changes. So when new issues arise or a new feature is requested, you should be able to weigh the trade-offs and work that in. And that, my friends, is the Agile Manifesto. In less than 69 words, these 17 developers were able to create something that changed modern software development as we know it. Birthed in 2001 at Snowbird Ski Resort, it took over 10 years for this idea to become mainstream. Nowadays, almost every company that builds software attempts to follow the principles of Agile. They use all kinds of processes and tools such as story points for estimating work effort, velocity charts to estimate how much a team is actually able to accomplish, and dev teams work in short iterations, otherwise known as sprints, which are usually two weeks long, packed with multiple meetings for the purposes of reflecting and refining. Companies will spend thousands of dollars to go through Agile transformations in hopes of fixing their broken process. But often times the message of Agile is completely lost in translation. When executives hear the word Agile, they think fast. They think that they'll be able to make software faster. And this is not what Agile is about. Agile is about refining and collecting data over multiple short cycles. When data is collected, we're able to see clearly how long a development effort will actually take us. But when this is longer than the managers hoped for, they still get angry. And rather than making trade-offs, they still impose irrational demands through the whims of corporate power structures. Which is why in software development, working overtime is such a common thing. Nowadays, it seems like most companies just throw around the word agile as a buzzword rather than following its true principles. Is this what the founding fathers had in mind when they first made the agile manifesto in 2001? Companies throwing it around as a buzzword, assuming that agile meant to go faster. You know, I don't think so, but I had to figure it out for myself. Hello? Hello. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing good. I like that um, airplane. Are you a pilot? Oh, I am. The notion of Agile, it kind of sparked up around the late 90s. And before that, there was this method, Waterfall, um, where it wasn't necessarily a broken process, but it wasn't an optimal process. That's correct. Yes. So, so you facilitated an event, right? You sent out an email to a bunch of lightweight leaders as uh, <laughs> you guys like to put it where does that t why did, why lightweight oh you know it was uh these these methods started popping up around 1995 scrum and fbd yeah. and extreme programming came out around 1998 and and they all had this one thing in common they were all very light in terms of uh, what they demanded from you is uh, a, a better way to say this. They were light in terms of ceremony. They were okay. low ceremony processes. Gotcha. And the word lightweight just kind of caught on with me. Uh, that was the name I preferred. Other people didn't care for it so much. So that word was actually abandoned at the at the Agile meeting. But the the manifesto itself was written by the 17 attendees, mm -hmm. uh, led by probably Martin Fowler and Ward Cunningham, um, who, who, who I think were the guys who, who came up with the seminal idea of the four statements opposing each other. Yep. And, and it was that, that opposition of statements that really sold everybody. This yeah. group of people was not a group of people who agreed with each other. Yeah, and you know what's, <laughs> you know what's really funny? I think the fact that 17 developers got together in a room, they all agreed on one thing, uh -huh. that, that should go in the history book itself. That, yeah, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. happen very often. Yeah, yeah especially, and, it, and it hasn't happened since. <laughs> I Yeah, I bet, man. I mean, especially with, with developers of that caliber and that, I don't know what the ego was like in the room, but I'm sure it was very high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it right. Went through the roof, man. Yeah, uh, so let's back up a little bit. You were, the, you were the one that sent out the email. Martin Fowler and I sent out the email. Okay. Uh, it was my idea to ask for a manifesto, but Martin and I both wanted to gather 
the proponents of the lightweight processes together in a room yeah. to hammer out the things that we agreed upon and the things that we disagreed upon. You did the normal, I guess, coding meetup things where you had sticky notes and you just talked about stuff. Uh, but that's not when the, the manifesto was birthed. It was until the second day. And um, some people say it's the second day. I okay. thought it was I thought it was the end of the first day, but that that information is lost. Okay. I don't know. But it did happen about halfway through. And it was a very magical moment. It, it was there was a lot of frustration because we'd gone through all the index cards and the brainstorming stuff that you always go through in these dumb meetings. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, somebody got up to the board and started this opposition of values idea. Right. And nobody remembers exactly who it was. I think it was Ward Cunningham. Most people think it was Martin Fowler. And all of a sudden in the room, there was this collective exhale. Mm -hmm. And it's like all these, all these arrogant consultants, high <laughs> ego consultants are all staring at the board and they're going, yeah, that's, that's why we're here. And it all just fell together. It just came together. It was uh, that, like I said, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I no, I bet, man. And like you said, the ego was high. Um, so no one really knows who started writing the actual manifesto. But yeah, I don't think don't agree. There are people who yeah. say they know, but but all of all the people who say they know, there's disagreement. Yes. Yeah, that's probably for the better, right? I think so. Yeah. Did you guys know that you were going to change software development? Well, we hoped, but. But th these kinds of meetings are not infrequent. You know, groups of consultants like this get together with a relative degree of frequency and the, the normal outcome is zero. Oh, yeah. we, you know, we did a fun thing. Oh, okay, we went skiing. Okay, you know, we had a fun conversation and, and it just disappears. The outcome of this was, a, uh, it was unique and very surprising. Ward Cunningham said that he was going to put it up on a website in uh -huh. the meeting. He said, I'll put it up on a website. And I think he said, I'll get people to sign it. I believe he said that in the meeting. I don't have a clear memory, but he did. He got people to sign it. And tens of thousands of people started signing this thing. We, um, we, had, we were not prepared for that level of enthusiasm. The more I, I work for companies and the more I see Agile, it's like, Companies kind of throw it around as a buzzword. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, are you satisfied with how people took the Agile Manifesto and how they're using it and how organizations are using it? I recently wrote a book uh, named entitled Clean Agile, which right. is me yelling at the world, right? So <laughs> yeah. I'm the old guy, you know, the curmudgeon on his doorstep telling all the young kids to get off his grass. Uh, and the, uh, the, the idea of that book was to just yell once again what Agile was about, because mm -hmm. I am frustrated with the, the way that Agile has been diluted and polluted. There is a message that came out of that manifesto. There's a message of Agile, and that message needs to be restated from time to time so that it remains clear. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual that this has happened. It's happened with virtually everything in the world. People will rush in and dilute and pollute because that's what people do. Mm -hmm. And then somebody has to stand up on a hill and say, wait a minute. <laughs> this is what we were really trying to do. Right. The subtitle of your book says Agile Software Craftsmanship. What does that mean? Um, which book was that? Clean code. Oh, clean code. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't remember the subtitles at all. Yeah. I'm not even sure I chose that subtitle. Um, so what does that mean? Well, agile, I put the word agile in there because I look at agile as the framework of the standards and ethics. Okay. The, re the, re the whole reason that we did that meeting in Snowbird 20 years ago was a meet, was a reason about ethics right mm -hmm. what's our responsibility to the software community and to the to society at large mm -hmm. so i i use the word agile whenever i'm talking about some kind of ethical framework gotcha craftsmanship is the is the mindset of doing things well doing things intentionally and purposefully and doing them well um, to protect the people that you are serving. 
Thank you so much again. I really appreciate your time. Sure. Sure. My right. pleasure. Take care, Bob. All right. Bye-bye. We often take for granted the people that revolutionized this industry. Being able to talk to one of them firsthand made me appreciate this craft that we call software development. Although the message of Agile has been lost around some organizations, I still believe in my heart that there are plenty out there who respect and uphold the true meaning of the Agile Manifesto that was originally created in 2001. Whenever you see the word Agile on a job posting or hung up somewhere around your company, know that it all stemmed from this meeting in Utah.